out because of all the things you've done for us. Lord, thank you that we are called by your name. Thank you that we are protected by your power. Thank you, Lord, that we are covered by your grace. Thank you, Lord, that we are your people, your children. Lord, may our lips never, never cease to praise you and worship you because you alone are worthy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, DC. We're going to dismiss our kids to go back to kids' church <coughs> and preschool church at this time. And uh, we have an opportunity this morning. Uh, I asked Evan to preach for us back in January and ended up not getting it done, but we, were, uh, we got it done today. So we're... Uh, Looking forward to him. He's home from Randall for this weekend. Came up to help us with the retreat and then also uh, preached this morning. So we're excited to have him come. So Evan, come share from God's word for us today. <coughs> so he's coming this bow and let's pray for the preaching of the word and ask God to bless it. Brother Kid, would you stand and lead us as we pray for God's word this morning? Go for it. For kind of loving Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning so thankful for all the love blessings that you have poured out on us. Nothing more important than the grace that you have given us. For it is by grace that we are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. We thank you for that gift. We hold your word high and mighty in front of us. Look to it for the answer. you having me back. I guess the first time wasn't too terrible. <laughs> uh, really, to, before I came, I changed my message probably like five, six times. Uh, really, what I came to talk about today was something I really didn't want to talk about. Uh, something that's been dealing with me and my heart, and just something that I really didn't want to share because it really hits to the core. And something I had to evaluate in myself and to realize that it's where I fail, that I'm not perfect either. That even though that I can come up here and God gave me the gift of being able to share his message, but I have to be willing to realize in myself where I falter as well. And that is just that the quality of forgiveness is love. And that even when in forgiveness, when it's not about forgiveness of me going to Christ, but forgiveness of someone sinning against me, or me sitting against someone else, that forgiveness is love, and that I have to adapt and accept every principle of forgiveness. As Ephesians 4.32 says, instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, forgave you. And to go on, as Hebrews 8.12 says, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And Micah 7.19 says, you will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. The thing.
thing that really bothered me and hurt me was that in forgiveness, I didn't live up to the principle that I had to forgive as Christ forgave me. <coughs> that, that I have to be able to be forgetful. I have to be able to mend that relationship. And I got into the place where I was willing to throw people away. I was willing to end relationships. I was willing to put myself in front of the gospel because of how I felt and how I wanted to, I wanted to reconcile it within myself. And I really started putting myself in front of what it really meant to forgive, what it really meant to be a part of the body of Christ. What I did was something that we love to do is I associated someone with their sin instead of their value. Right. I took their value away from them in my heart when really what I should have done is I should have replaced that sin with the forgiveness that Christ gave me. I was willing, I was willing to go to Christ and ask for forgiveness and be on my knees and cry and do whatever, do whatever else came into my heart. But when it came to someone else against me, what I was willing to do was to put myself in front of that. I was willing to say, I was willing to say, well, I've never been that evil, that bad. I've never struck in someone to the core of their most vulnerable spot in their heart. But really what it came down to was the same God that I serve is the same God that they have. That's right. That there's no difference in how we both came, that we both came to be clean. There's no difference in how we both had to bow our knee and come to Christ and ask for his forgiveness. There's no difference in that. But I played that role that there was. I played the role that there was a difference because I knew that in some way I was better. I knew that there was no way to mend the relationship because of how bad someone did something to me. And I see that, and I had to, and I went and I examined that in our faith in Christianity. I decided to take a look at that. And what I found was, is that we love, we love to denounce the Pharisees and the Sadducees for how they played their role. But then I also look and see that we do the same thing. We, we commit ourselves to this sort of fake love, this sort of fake evaluation of ourselves, because as soon as someone does something or it's public, as soon as someone finds out, someone knows, as well, I mean, you can come to church, but you just can't really be involved. Or you can come and be a part of this, but you know, just make sure you stay quiet. You know, there's not, there's not a true forgiveness. It's not truly thrown away. It's not truly we can look at them and forget their sin because Christ forgot mine. You know, I'm so glad that he didn't forget my sin. And I'm so glad he forgot my sin when he forgave me. Because I can't tell you how many times that I sinned against him. And at the same time, he never changed that relationship. He mended it. He took it and placed it back together. He wasn't allowing it to stay broken. Because he knew I couldn't survive any way else. And that's the same thing is that I had to realize is that I am an example of the gospel. As a church, we are an example of the gospel. He created us in this world for his glory and his glory alone. And we are reflections of his glory. And so I have no right not to try and every part of my being live up to that. That's right. I don't have any right to write someone off. And maybe I'm the only example in their life. I'm the only family member in their life that is the example of who Christ is and who his forgiveness is and where it abounds and his grace doesn't have, his grace is abundant. But I was willing, but it was willing and easy to forget that because when we place ourselves in front of that, we place ourselves in front of forgiveness, when we take for granted the gift that he gave us of salvation, when we place that in the hands of someone else and not in his hands, it is so easy to get turned away from remembering that when he says, forgive as Christ forgave, we have to adapt every principle of that. Yeah. Right. And I forget someone's value. I forget that I'm no more less or no more valuable than someone else. That I have my, my spiritual gifts, I have my opportunities in God, and so does someone else. And I forget that they, I, for, I apologize of how hard this is for me to get out of my heart, but as something I believe he's called me to share is just, it is important that I remember that God loves me the same as he loves them, is remember that they have 
their opportunities, their people that God has intended for them to reach, to speak to, to share his love. And I have to be willing to support them. And I have to make sure that the gospel is at the front. I have to make sure that when I forgive them, it's because Christ forgave me. Because I don't have the strength to forgive them. I don't have the capability to think about what it could have been or what it couldn't have been. I have to remember that when Christ calls for forgiveness, he means forgiveness. He doesn't mean this fake forgiveness where I forgive you, but I'm going to keep you at a distance. I forgive you, but I'm never going to be able to bring you back into my life. That's not what it's about. If we're called to be a family, we're called to be Christians, that means that the blood of Christ is thicker than the family blood in our own veins. That means that when we come into church together, this is the true family. This means that when we come here, that no matter what happens in or outside of these doors, we have to stick together and we have to be willing to mend those relationships and become stronger in each other. We have to be willing to forgive our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, that teacher, that classmate, because it is more important to serve him than it is to serve your own, your own failings, your own hurt, your own pains. Because if you serve them, you're going nowhere but inside yourself. And I and I love and I love to think of I love to think of uh, Ephesians. Well, right here when Paul when Paul writes down, instead be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ forgave you. And I, the reason that verse stuck in my mind so much was because I realized I realized that He didn't forget my value, and that He didn't forget that who I was. When he called me to the ministry, he knew that I would fail, but he called me anyway. That when he called them to their job, when he called them to whatever school it was, he knew what would happen, but he called them anyway. It, the, the point of it is, is that if I can forgive them, then that means that I can be, that I can be called and laid in Christ. Because I know that I live up to these principles. I know that I will fail them, but I know what I'm looking for. And the thing is, is that we always look for love and we always look for forgiveness and kindness. But then when it becomes our turn, we always like to be the, we always like to be the ones that are silent and hidden in the corner. Because it's easier. It's easier to step away. It's easier to back down. It's easier to be apart from it. But when it is our turn, when it is our turn to put Christ on the forefront, when it is our turn to be the one in the center, to tell them who Christ is and to say, because he forgave me, I forgive you. I'm not saying that there's not a road to reconciliation. I'm not saying that it's going to happen in a day. But what I am saying, what I am getting to is that you will not reach that until you get to the end of that road of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It is a part of our lives to forgive each other. Because if you don't fail me today, if you didn't fail me yesterday, I promise I will fail you tomorrow or you'll fail me tomorrow. At some point, I'm going to need you to reach out your hand and forgive me. Even when I don't come and ask for it, even when I feel like I'm in the right, I'm going to need you to be there for me because I promise you, if you put your faith in me, I will never, I will never complete that promise for you. But I know God can, and I know he will. That's right. And I know that is why he gave us his forgiveness, because he knew that we would fail. But he also knows that in forgiveness is learning, is teaching is adaptability and in that we can learn how to grow in each other but I can't grow and I can't become bigger in Christ and I can't just fall in love with him if in every every time someone mistreats me someone hurts me but I write them off and I forget them I forget that they are my brothers my sisters if I forget that I can't grow because I have no example I have no one to look to I have no one to truly Put myself in when I'm when I'm feeling wrong and a lost. It is because God gave us a church. He didn't call us to be alone. There are individual aspects of the Christian faith. There's an individual walk, but He didn't call that walk to be alone. That's, right. That's why we're here to get it together, gathered on Sunday. That's why here we come here to mend our hearts. We come here and we come here to forgive others. And that's why James talks about confessing our sins to each other.
but and the problem is we come and we face judgment. We come and we and we can't talk to each other because we're so worried about what someone else will say, what someone else will think about what we've done. But the thing is, is there's no metric scale to sin. There's not one. Because if you lie and I went out and robbed the store today, we would be at the same place at the same time. Away from God. There's no metric scale in that. But the thing is, is we forget that we forget to confide in each other. We forget to be there for each other because we get so wrapped up in I'm just not as bad as they are. I'm not as bad as, as this person. But I forget, and we forget to read that David himself, the man after God's own heart, killed a man and took his wife. We forget that some of the greatest people in the Bible came because what they do, they came for forgiveness. And sometimes when they couldn't come for forgiveness from themselves, others came on their behalf, and it was an example to them. And the thing is, is it wasn't the people coming on my behalf, forgiving me and my teen years, forgiving me even a month ago. I promise you I wouldn't stand here today because it is because that he has placed that on their hearts. And they listened to that call of forgiveness that I am able to be here and share what he has placed on my heart. I, I wanted to so easily come up here and just give an easy message, give something that was easy for me to talk about, something easy for me to just spill out. But he told me I couldn't do that. And the reason he said I couldn't do that is because that's not honoring me. It's because it's not always easy to be a Christian. It's not always what you want it to be. It's not always what you want to say. And in forgiveness, it's the same thing. Because I, I guarantee you, there's times I've wanted to hate you. I've wanted to throw you away. There's times where I knew my life would be easier if you were gone. But the thing is, is that it's not about me at the end of the day. It is about his glory and his passion for his love for you. And because of his love, it wouldn't allow him to throw you away because he is a supreme ethic of all. And I had to realize that, that in that moment, when I was at my most vulnerable, that when I was under attack, that at some point, that same person that I was going to throw away was there for me at a time that I like to forget about when I'm at my most vulnerable. And the same time as I know in my life I've failed plenty. I know that I've failed my mother, 16, 17, 18. I remember I'd walk out the house two weeks in a row, wouldn't say a word to her. And I'd go out there and party and do whatever else it was that I felt like I needed to do. But the thing was that she didn't disassociate my value and my potential and who God would have called me to be because she knew that there was more for me and she knew that God wasn't going to let her just throw that away. And so she continued to reach out her hand because that's who she was to me. And it wasn't just because I was her son, but it was because she loved me through Christ because love cannot exist if it doesn't come through Christ. That's right. Because God is love. As the same saying in theology, God is logic. God, God is the consumption of all. And for me to be able to pour this out, for me to be able to come here and on his behalf allow me to speak, it is because he gave me forgiveness. It is because he was willing to say that there is much more for you than what you can see. And when there's times when I feel like I'm unworthy, when I just feel like I've sinned too much to be able to go out and speak upon his name, the thing is that he keeps reminding me is that you're not worthy to begin with. And I had to come to that conclusion is that I can't try to live this perfect life and then exemplify myself. Is I have to be willing to come in front of you and tell you that I'm a sinner. Tell you that I mess up and make mistakes and that I'm never going to be good enough for Christ. Because we are in the same boat together. And that's why we have to grow together. That's why I believe that you will forgive me and I will forgive you because it is more than us. There's a whole world out there that is waiting for us, that is waiting for us to give that same forgiveness, that is waiting for us to go out there and preach the gospel and spread his joy. Because in this room, this is where we grow. This is where we come together. Because we can't change a thing out there if we can't change a thing in our hearts in here. It is just, it is so appalling when we come into church together. And we're debated, and we're rugged, and we're torn apart by each other by the things that we've done that happened years ago. 
that happened months, even moments ago. Because the thing is, as, Paul, as Peter came to Christ and said, how many times should I forgive someone? And he said, seven times seven. Then he upped the ante and he said, 70 times seven. He said, why? Because there's more at stake than just you, Peter. There's more there than you. And I had to realize to push myself out of the way was to give God the glory. Was to say that even though I know you spread rumors about me, even though I know that you opened up my darkest secrets, even though I know that you, when I showed mercy, you were merciless, even though I know all this happened and you don't even care, it is because Christ loved me that I can love you. And so I'm willing to put myself aside so that me and you can mend our relationship so that we can go together out there and be impactful. Because at the end of the day, it is a tragedy to see even one soul taken out of the hand of Christ. God is so great in what he does. He's so amazing in who he is. There's not a flaw in him. And there's many flaws in me. But it always gets to the point in my mind, in my head, when I'm so willing, so eager to say, oh, well, I try to nitpick every little verse and find whatever way I can to get around it. I refer back to the Greek, to the Hebrew. I like to go back and uh, look at, I like to go back and look at all of the little things I can to see if, oh, what's the grammatical influency? I like to look at those things because I want to try and find myself a loophole because I want to, I want to be sure, I want to be sure that it's going to be this hard. It's going to be like this. That it's going to have to say that even though he came against me, but it's forgotten. Are you, are you really sure that it's forgotten? That I really have to say, no, I'm sorry, I don't care anymore. I'm so sorry, but it doesn't matter to me. Because what happened is in the past. And because Christ is here and he's anointing our future, I'm going to allow it to be forgotten. And that's the conclusion I had to come to, was that once again, it wasn't about me. Forgiveness is great. Compassion is wonderful. But the one thing about it is, is you have to be willing to give it. You have to be willing to open yourself up to it. You have to be willing to say that, you know what? At some point in my life as well, I was where you were. It might not have been between us. It might have been between someone else. But at some time in my life, at the same point, I was broken. I hurt everyone else in my life because of who I was and my selfishness. And the thing is, is that Christ saved me. And so you know what? I know that he will do the same for you. And at that time, that's where we need to be an example. That's where we need to step up and be like, I'm throwing the bitterness away. I remember just yesterday, I was talking with my grandfather, opening up to him about what had happened and what was going on. And the thing he's told me and stuck in my brain was that bitterness will destroy you. Because bitterness is selfishness because it's only about you. And the thing is, is that I came up here, uh, what was it, two months ago and talked and talk about commitment. But even in bitterness and in pain, there's commitment. And I, we need to be committed to forgiveness, to love, to re representing someone else's value. That there is commitment in that because that is honoring Christ and what he called you for. What he called me for. Bitterness will take everything that you are and consume it because all that it ever does is remind you of what happened and what it was. And that no matter what happens in this world, someone will always fail you. But God won't fail you, and that's why he tells you that revenge is his. That's why he tells you that all that is all is his. That's why no longer we can hold on to it. We can be a part of it. Because the longer, you never know, but the longer you hold on to it is the longer that they are away from Christ. It's the longer that you are no longer in that example. And you never know, but in that bitterness, it can take you away as well. And it's not just bitterness between you and one person, but it can be bitterness from a childhood. It can be, it can be bitterness from even in adulthood with your own family members. See, because the thing about it is, is that in sin, everyone is guilty. 
They might not be newly, freshly guilty that just happened yesterday, but I can tell you they're guilty from a year ago. They're guilty from a month ago, a day ago. But, and that's the great thing is that together, if you're willing to mend that relationship, if you're willing to forget it, that together you can come together and be with him and be willing to show others in that same situation that he is able to forgive you and able to take that pain away. Because if you try to take it away yourself, if you try to distance yourself from that person, from everyone that ever does anything wrong to you, there is going to be no one left in the room besides you. Because you can go to whatever group of friends, whatever church you want to, and you can find as many people as you want. But at some point, someone will fail you or you will fail them, and you're going to be left alone because you are not willing to forgive and forgive yourself because you are not perfect. And that's what it comes down to, is that it's all in Christ and it's all in him. Because even when he was upon that cross... The same thing he said was for me and for everyone else. Forgive them. They know not what they do. And sometimes some people hurt you and they don't know what they're doing either. They just know that they're just trying to get by. And that's so sad because when they're in a time of need, when they're in a time of hurt, I'm willing to just cut them off instead of thinking about what really is going on. I'm so consumed with myself that I forget who's truly important. And then again, I refer back, I refer back to Hebrews 8, 12, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And the thing I love about that verse is it doesn't say if or but or when. It says I will forgive. It's gone. No more. So if I'm still claiming to be in love with you, if I'm still claiming to want to be a part of your life, but all I see when I look at you is sin, all I see is a hurt that you gave me, all I see is what you did to me two years ago. I can't tell you I really forgave you. I can't tell you I really care about you. But that's just playing a fool to yourself. Because truly, if I can forgive you, I know that I can spread that same message of forgiveness around this world, and that is a whole point of it. That is a whole point of forgiveness, is that it will advance the gospel, because if you can't forgive, it's going to stop right there in your heart. But with the forgiveness, it gives it a new lane to advance. And with that, when you forgive, when you allow it to be gone and to be forgotten and to be brand new, when you allow yourself to be regenerated in Christ, when you allow your heart to be opened up to him, what that allows is it gives you a type and a sense of vulnerability that you can re-examine yourself and look at yourself in that and see the role in which you play. Because sometimes when we think that we have to forgive others, Sometimes we have to realize that we have to forgive ourselves in the same sense. We forget what we do as well. We forget what role we play. We forget that at the same time as we always like to read the verses and see how the uh, people, the Romans, that put Jesus on the cross, is that if I was there at the same time, I guarantee you, we would all be a part of the same, part of the same Roman rule. We all together put Christ on that cross. And even when he said, as our enemy, when we were his enemy, he forgave us. So there's more to this forgiveness than just on the surface. Forgiveness is at the core of the heart. Because forgiveness is the stepping stone into a new relationship. And that is the whole part of being able to be forgiven. Is that after I've been forgiven, after I've told you that I'm sorry, that you're sorry, after we've gone to that place, we're able to come to Christ and in his name, we are able, we are able to seek, his, uh, seek him out, seek out his mercy, lay at his feet, lay in his glory because of how good he is. And we can put our focus back on who he is and on what he is. 
and what it means to come and be a Christian, what it means to come and be a part of this church. We can stop clouding ourselves with bitterness and hate. We can start and we can come into church and we can fulfill what James was talking about. We can confess to each other our sins and our iniquities. We can come to each other and be open. Because I know even from growing up, I remember hearing the stories and seeing what was happening. Is that we would come into church and then everyone would just play their part and play their role. Everyone would make sure that they would look nice, they dressed up real good. And they would make sure that, you know, everyone didn't know what happened before. You know, and then they would tell some people and not tell the others. And then they would make sure that they would play this little game. They would play with each other like they were really hiding it. But really, this is supposed to be the place of love where we can come together and grow. But the thing is, is that this is the place where we have to come and be the most fake with each other. Because what we're worried about is what they'll think. Is when, oh, we're not really committed to Christ. We're not really committed to what we believe. But at sometimes it's at the point where we need to see that I need you to have my back. I need you to show me what Christ is. I need you to show me where I've gone wrong. And I need to be able to be open with somebody. If I can't be open with my church family, if I can't be open with the same people that are supposed to love me more than the blood that I have in this world, that they're supposed to be there for me, I have to know that they will give me forgiveness. I have to know that they will be willing to talk with me. They won't be willing to shove me in the closet into the dark because I just did something that was too bad. Because the thing to realize is if Adolf Hitler himself Moments before he died, decided to give his life to Christ in true and complete repentance. He would be he would be in heaven with us, and some of us in this room could very much not be. That is what we have to realize: is that it's not about you, it's not about me, but the thing is, it's about us as a whole serving God and being able to lift each other up into that. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you do. We're under the same blanket of forgiveness. So what am I, who am I to hold something against you? Because I tell you that I'm just as guilty as you are. <laughs> Paul talks about being the chief of sinners. I'd like to put myself on that place instead because I know that I am just as guilty as anyone else in this world. And the thing about forgiveness, this is a humongous theme in the Bible. And the thing about it is, is because if there wasn't forgiveness, then Christianity couldn't be the only religion. I apologize. Christianity couldn't be the only religion where eternity is a gift. It's not something to be earned. And I'm so thankful for that. Because I know how poor of a person, of a man I am. But I know in Christ, he made me a champion because he knew that I couldn't survive without him. That's right. And he knew, and he asked me, and he brought me here to give this message. Because in myself, I wanted to shove it down and place it somewhere else. Because it's not nice, it's not good to come and talk about things that are hard to hear. Talk about things that we want to disagree with. If you disagree with me, I, I'm fine with that. Go and read the scriptures for yourself and let's talk about it. Because let's come together and come to a conclusion so that we can get together and start forgiving. And we can be strong together. Because I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to come and harp on you. But what I'm saying is we need to really look at ourselves and change something. Because if we're really being sincere, how many times have we came here and just been open with each other and not thought about what to say or how to say it? When is the last time is that we've been able to have an, have an altar call and everyone's came out? When's the last time that we've been able to, at the meal table together, be open and affluent with each other? And the thing is, I'm not saying is that we're all bad and, and that this church is a bad place, but the problem is what I'm bringing out. Is it how can we can come to the place of God, but it not be the center of our love and not be where our love shows the most? And I'm just as guilty as a part of that because I'm just as guilty as turning away and be like, oh, did you hear that? Did you see that? Or do you know? I can't believe. But the thing is, every pastor, every missionary, every Billy Graham, whoever you decide to look up to, <coughs> At some point in their life, if you can go back and watch the tape of their life, they failed just as badly as anyone else. And the thing is, is, we're all called to be ministers, we're all called to be evangelists in this day, we're all called to 
share it. It might not be in the same place. It might not be up here at this pulpit. It might not be at your work. It might, it might be in your youth group. It might, it might doesn't matter where it is. But wherever he called you to, we're all called to be a part of his faith and to share it. And that can't be possible if you aren't willing to move on. Because I know the thing about me and myself is that I wasn't willing to move on for a long time. Is that, you know, I was willing to share and give the gospel to people that hadn't hurt me yet. I was willing to be affluent and be open to people that just hadn't, I hadn't heard talk too long yet. That I didn't think were bad enough yet. But then the thing Christ decided to open up to me last night at the bed of my prayer was that you're just as guilty and you know what? You're not worthy. And that hit me to the core because the thing is, in my mind, in these past few weeks, what was going on, what was going through, was that, man, I'm sure glad. I am sure glad that I'm not like them. But the problem is, Christ came here for the sinner. He didn't come here for the righteous. only one thing about it is either I'm going to be a part of that or I'm going to be in the way of that. And I promise you there's nothing that's going to stop him. And he's just going to throw me out the way. Because I'm not going to be a roadblock in his ministry. I'm either going to be a part of it and bring it through or either he's going to push me out of the way because there's more important things than how Evan Turner is feeling today. It is the glory of God and the glory of God alone. share my heart open with you. Uh, I'd like to just close in a moment of prayer. Father, I just want to thank you for how amazing and how glorious you are. For what you do for me and you do for this church family and what you do for churches around the country and in the world. Father, you are just so great. You are so forgiving and you allow us to show that forgiveness be an example of it and to give it ourselves, Father. And to mend those relationships, you allow us to be a part of your family when we don't deserve it. You are so good. And Father, even though we fail, it's the mirror of that. Father, we know that you are not going to leave us. We know that we can come to you and be open. And we pray that you make this a place of openness, of love, and of trust. And that this be a place where we grow together and become a part of you, God. And we thank you for who you are. And we thank you for your son. And we thank you for his cry of mercy upon that cross. Father, we just pray. And we pray that we will live up. That we will try in our best, in our hearts, Father, to be a church family that goes out from these doors and spreads this message of love, of forgiveness, and of need for you into this world no matter the cost. In your son's, in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray, Father.